Welcome back to my channel, Madden Language, and we're going to tackle Periodic Payment, Future Value, Ordinary, and WT. So let's start. So simulan muna natin sa mga variables na gagamitin natin. Let's start with the letter F. We have Future Value and WT. Ang letter C naman, that will be the cash flow or regular payments. Ang N will be the number of times compounded or compounding frequency. R is for the rate and T is for the time. Let's also review what is the number of times compounded for the year or yung letter M natin. First one, we have biennially. So every two years, that will be 0.5. Annually natin, well, that will be 1. Semi-annually, that will be 2. Quarterly will be 4. Monthly will be 12. Weekly is 52. And daily is 365. Okay, so ano ba yung formula na gagamitin natin? para mahanap yung periodic payment sa future value ordinary NWT. So we have the cash flow or periodic payment. Remember, yung cash flow and periodic payment, parehas lang yun. Okay? So C, or cash flow, is equal to, sa numerator part, we have the future value. And sa denominator part, we have another fraction. So it's a complex fraction. So sa denominator, we have, Una, sa numerator part, that will be the parentheses 1 plus R over N at ang exponent niya ay N times T. At yung sagot niya, mamainis natin ng 1. Sa denominator niya, ng denominator none, that will be R over N. So, may kita niyo naman sa screen kung order of operations dyan. Kung ano yung paprioritize natin. So, let's have the first example. Sample number 1, Jesse would like to have... $30,000 in the future by depositing some money in a bank every 3 months for 10 years at an interest rate of 5% compounded quarterly. How much will be the quarterly deposit? So, first step natin, lagay natin agad yung formula. So, we have yung cash flow, tapos yung future value, tapos yung mga variables natin. Next step natin, let's substitute the values. So, Cash flow sa numerator part, yung future value natin ay 30,000. Color-coded naman siya. So, may kita nyo dyan siya dun sa screen. Sa denominator part natin, okay, so we have another, it's a complex fraction, ha? So, dun sa parentheses, we have 1 plus 0 0.05, tapos over 4. 0 0.05 kasi 5%, di ba? At compounded quarterly, ibig sabihin nun, 4 yung N natin. Mapapansin nyo, dun sa question, in a nag deposit daw siya ng some money in a bank every 3 months. So, that will be quarterly. Kasi sa isang taon, mayroon tayong apat na quarters. So, 12 divide mo ng 4, that will be 3. So, tatlong, I mean, apat na tatlong buwan. So, let's continue. So, yung exponent natin, that will be n times t. Ang n natin again, that will be 4. At ang time natin, that will be 10. Okay? So, yung sagot niyan, minus natin ng 1. Don't forget the minus 1. At yung sabihin kababa, that's R over N. So, that will be 0 0.05 over mo ng 4. Ngayon, simplify natin yung numerator denominator. So, sa numerator natin, wala tayong problema. That's 30,000. Simplify na lang natin yung fraction pa dun sa ilalim ng numerator. Nandun muna tayo sa may parentheses tapos yung minus 1. So, pag sinimplify natin yan, that will be 0 0.64, 3619, and so on. Remember, if you're going to do this, dapat diretso siya sa calcute. So, nung mapapansin mo, naglagay ako ng ellipsis dun sa number. Sabihin nun, may continuation pa siyang decimal. Okay. Denominator part naman, that yung 0 0.05 over 4, pag sinimplify mo siya, that will be 0 0.0125. Okay? So, simplify further. Simplify na natin yung fraction sa baba ng numerator ng 30,000. 0.643619, divide mo siya ng 0.0125, that will be 51.48952, and so on. So, may dot, dot, dot yun. And lastly, simplify natin siya further pa. Last na to. So, that will be 30,000, divide mo siya ng 51.48952, and so on. And the answer will be $582.64. Remember, pa mag around kayo ng number, doon na lang sa final answer. Okay? Pa nag around kayo every calculation na hindi pa, tap, di pa siya final answer, hindi nyo makukuha yung mismong answer. So again, reiterate ko lang, you have to round the number or estimate it only sa final answer na. So going back to the problem, 
dun sa $582.64, in daw yung kailangan na ma-quarterly deposit ni Jesse para makakuha siya ng $30,000 sa future. Okay? So, every 3 months siya mag-deposit ng 582.64 now with a rate of 5% compounded quarterly for 10 years para makuha niya yung $30,000. Alright, so example number 2. Thalia would like to have $50,000 in 20 years by depositing some money in a bank every month at an interest rate of 15% compounded monthly. How much will be the monthly deposit? Alright, so next up, kailangan natin i-substitute yung mga values. So we have the cash flow is equal dun sa 50,000. At dun tayo sa denominator part. So we have another fraction, the complex fraction. So parenthesis muna tayo, that will be 1 plus 0.15 over mo ng 12. 0.15 kasi 15%. Compounded monthly, kaya magiging 12. Ngayon, ang exponent natin ay n times t. So that will be 12 times mo ng 20. Yung sagot niyan, ma-minus natin ng 1. At yung subtraction sa baba nun, that will be 0.15 over mo ng 12. Makikita niyo naman dun sa screen kung ano yung unayin nyo na operation. So unayin nyo muna yung simplify yung sa baba ng 50,000 na fraction. Okay? Next step natin, simplify it further pa. Simplify natin yung nasa baba ng 50,000 dun sa taas na may parentheses. So, 1 plus 0.15 over 12, exponent at 12 times 20, tapos may minus 1. That will be 18.715-4935. At dun sa 0.15 over 12 naman, that will be 0 0.0125. Simplify it further pa. Divide na natin, 18.715-4935 and so on. Divide mo ng 0 0.0125, that will be 1497.239481 and so on also. And lastly, 50,000, divide mo siya ng 1497, and so on. That will be $33.39. Okay? So, nag-ground lang ako ng number sa final answer na. If we're going to do it in the calculator, dapat dare-derecho to. Okay? Paano ko siya nilagay dun sa screen, yung order niyan, ganun dapat yung malagay niya sa calcu. So, going back to the problem, Ano daw yung kailangan na ma-deposit ni Thalia monthly para makakuha siya ng $50,000 in 20 years in the future with an interest rate of 15% compounding monthly in 20 years? So that will be $33.39. Alright, so last example tayo. Nori would like to have $1,000 in 5 years by depositing some money in the bank daily. At an interest rate of 1% compounded daily, how much will be the daily deposit? So first step, lagi natin yung formula. Second step, substitute natin yung mga values. So cash flow or periodic payment is equal to, sa numerator part, $1,000. Sa baba naman, naman tayo sa may parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.01 over 365. 0 0.01 kasi 1%. 365 naman kasi compounded daily. Ngayon, ang exponent mo, that will be nt, n times t, 365 times mo ng 5 kasi 5 years. Ngayon, minus tayo ng 1. At yung sa fraction sa ilalim nun, that will be 0 0.01 over mo ng 365. Okay, so let's simplify it further. Let's start with dun sa may parentheses muna. 1 plus mo dun sa may 0 0.01 over 365. Yung sagot niyan with an exponent of 365 times 5. Yung sagot niyan, mamayon sa tinong 1, you will have an answer of 0 0.05, and so on. Ngayon, 0 0.01 over mo na 365, that will be 0 0.00027397, and so on also. Divide na natin, yung nasa babang fraction, yung 0 0.05 something, and yung 0.4 na 0, that will be 1871.3687. And lastly, Final answer natin, yung 1,000 divide mo ng 1871.3687 and something, that will be 53 cents. Okay? So, dun sa tanong na, magkano daw yung kailangan i-deposit ni Nori araw-araw para makakuha siya ng $1,000 in 5 years na may interest rate na 1% compounded daily? That will be 53 cents. Dollars to ah. Okay. And that's the end of the lesson about 
Periodic Payment Future Value Ordinary NWT. Ang next video natin will be about periodic payment ulit. Kaso dito naman, this will be Present Value Ordinary NWT. And if you would like to comment or suggest another Matin Language video or kung may assignment kayo, please comment down below. Again, this is James, your Matin Language Instructor. Please also like and subscribe and also click nyo na rin yung bell notification para updated kayo sa bagong videos ng Matin Language. Thank you. Bye-bye.